It is six o'clock, and I will call the May 28, 2024 meeting of the With County Board of Supervisors to order. This evening, we have Pastor Andre Lavage from the Withfield Seventh Day Adventist Church to provide the invocation. If you would please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. of all wisdom. As we gather here to open the Wake County Board of Supervisors meeting, we seek your guide and your presence and your blessing upon this assembly. Grant the member the clarity needed to make decisions that are just, fair, and wise. We call on the old God to be now amidst this evening because without your guidance, without you leading your people, may not lead right. I pray that you will visit each and every member here tonight with more wisdom than they can ever imagine. You are the source of all wisdom and you are able to do above and beyond what we can ask for. Bless each member present with insight and foresight so that their efforts will benefit all whom they serve. Guide their hearts and minds to act with compassion, courage, and sense of responsibility. May their actions today contribute to a future where justice and peace prevail, and may they always be mindful of their day to uphold the values of our laws, the values of the Bible, honesty, transparency, and accuracy. We thank you, Lord, on behalf of each member for the opportunity to serve your community and also to serve this country in the capacity that they are serving. This Father, we pray in the worthy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If I don't hear any objection, I'm going to go ahead and do the presentation of the National Police Week resolution. I know Chief Breedlove has a council meeting at 7, um, so I'll do that before citizens' time. That's good. And I would ask for the representatives from the uh, law enforcement agencies that we've invited to, to come forward. Um, I'm going to put you out on this list again. Do you like my phone? And if it's Supervisor Terry brought this up. Um, meeting um, because it, it was National Police Week and, and the four officers um, in North Carolina had been um, tragically shot and killed and it, it's even more appropriate uh, because our neighbors in Smith County, uh, Scott Prater, who uh, uh, served for several years in Smith County Sheriff's Office as a narcotics investigator and then he transitioned back into the school resource officer at Chill Howard High School where he also coached. Um, he, he battled cancer for several years and unfortunately um, uh, Scott passed away I believe it was Friday. Um, so it's um, even more so uh, poetic I guess you'd say. But, with County Resolution 2024-13 National Police Week. Whereas National Police Week was established by joint resolution of the United States Congress in 1962 and is observed during the week of which May 15th occurs. 
And whereas from the beginning of this nation, law enforcement officers have played an important role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of which are guaranteed by the Constitution and in protecting the lives and properties of our citizens. Whereas every day law enforcement officers face the threat of violence and danger, routinely putting their lives in jeopardy to defend others, putting themselves at risk of injury, disability, or even death. And whereas these men and women, by their distinctive service and dedicated efforts as law enforcement officers, have earned our highest respect and deepest gratitude. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Whit County Board of Supervisors assembled in regular session this 28th day of May 2024 does hereby express its gratitude to the dedicated service and courageous deeds of the law enforcement officers of the Whit County Sheriff's Office the Whitfield Town Police, the Rory Creek Town Police, Division 4 of the Virginia State Police, and the Whitfield Community College Police, and presents a copy of this resolution to each agency present as a token of its appreciation. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be incorporated into the official minutes of the Whit County Board of Supervisors, signed Brian W. Ball, Chair. With that, I'll entertain a motion to approve 2024-13. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Terry, a second by Mr. Cook. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Good to see you. I just know you're saying. True, I get in charge of this here. All right, we'll move back on to the agenda. We have citizens' time. As always, I'll call you up. And you'll have three minutes. The first person and only person we have signed up is Miss Diane Ennis. Miss Ennis? Thank you, Miss Annis. <coughs> as much as I hate to close citizens' time after we were called efficient, she was the only <laughs> one to speak. So I close citizens' time. Next on our agenda, we have um, several public hearings. The first one is for our VDOT <coughs> six year plan. And Mr. Barry, I'm going to let you read all that. Certainly. Because <laughs> if I wrote it, it'd been a lot shorter. <laughs> the Virginia Department of Transportation, the Board of Supervisors of Wythe County, in accordance with Section 33.2331 of the Code of Virginia, will conduct a joint public hearing in order with the Wythe County Administration Building 340 South 6th Street, Whitfield, Virginia, 24382, at 6.05 p.m. on May 28, 2024. The purpose of this public hearing is to receive public comment on proposed secondary six-year plan for fiscal years 24-25, through 2930 in Wythe County and on the secondary system construction budget for fiscal year 24-25.
copies of the proposed plan and budget may be viewed, reviewed at the Whitfield Residence, the office, office of the Virginia Department of Transportation, located at 2483 Chatton Road, Whitfield, Virginia, or at Whit County offices located at 340 South 6th Street, Whitfield, Virginia. All projects in the secondary six-year plan that are eligible for federal fund will be included in the statewide transportation improvement program, which documents how Virginia will obligate the federal transportation fund. Persons requiring special assistance to attend and participate, this hearing should contact the Virginia Department of Transportation at 276-228-2154. Persons wishing to speak at this public hearing should contact the Wood County Board of Supervisors at 276-223-4500. All right. We don't have anybody signed up to speak at the public hearing, so I will close the public hearing portion. Um, Mr. Bear or Miss Collins won his, um, if I can scroll down, has prepared some resolutions um, to approve the six year plan that we've discussed in the past. So Mr. Bear, how do we need to proceed? Because can we adopt all of them? Uh, yes, I, uh, I, I would recommend that the board adopt um, Resolution 2414, which approves the six year plan, and then resolutions 2415 for Powder Mill Road, 2416 for Stillwell Road, and 2417 for Zion Church Road. Um, and Mr. Chairman, unless the county attorney advises otherwise, I do not see why you could not approve all four resolutions unless anyone wants to address any items separately. Hmm. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> to adopt all of them to adopt all, all right I have a motion by mr. Smith to adopt all the secondary six-year plan resolutions as presented do I have a second second have a second by mr. Morgan is there any questions or discussion on those resolutions mr. chairman I will just make mention and I know Vito has some representatives here uh, the revision that mr. Uh, Bernard made a request to remove a small section of road has been removed from this proposed plan. So I know he is not here, but I just want to mention that that was in concurrence with his wishes. All right, does that lead to any questions? Right, here and then we'll do a roll call vote. Ms. Lawson, we'll start with you. Aye. 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 So approved. Next, we have our public hearing for our proposed county budget for fiscal year 2024. I'll read the public notice for the record. Pursuant to section 15.2-2506 of the Code of Virginia, Code of Virginia and amendments thereto with County Board of Supervisors will conduct a public hearing. The purpose of the public hearing is to give the citizens of Wythe County an opportunity to comment on the proposed county budget, which includes the school board budget for fiscal year 2024-2025. The public hearing will be held on Tuesday, May 28, 2024 in the boardroom of the administration building, 340 South 6th Street, Whitfield, Virginia at 6 p.m. The budget synopsis is prepared and published for information and fiscal planning purposes only. The inclusion in this budget of any item or items does not constitute an obligation on the part of the Board of Supervisors of Wythe County to appropriate any funds for that item or purpose. There is no allocation or designation of any funds of this county for any purpose until there has been an appropriation for that purpose by the Wythe County Board of Supervisors. This budget has been prepared on the basis of the estimates and requests submitted to the Board of Supervisors by the constitutional officers, intergovernmental agencies, non-governmental agencies, and department heads of Wythe County, and review and amendments to those requests by the Board of Supervisors and staff. <coughs> With that being said, Mr. Barry, do you have anything to add on the proposed budget? No, sir, Mr. Chairman, but as you're opening a public hearing, uh, I would request that we also do the school board budget public hearing, which was included to have a separate notice. I'll be glad to read that, or you may read that if you'd like, Mr. Chairman. 
No, I've done pretty good on that last one, so I'll give it a try. <laughs> Pursuant to Section 58.1-3007 of the Code of Virginia, of the Code of Virginia amendments thereto, the With County Board of Supervisors will conduct a public hearing. The purpose Chairman, of the public. I'm going to run. You're on the tax levy. If you'll go back. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm telling you this. Ever since they updated this Adobe, I'm still behind. All right. Pursuant to Section 15.2-2506 of the Code of Virginia, 1950, and, and amendments thereto, the With County Board of Supervisors will conduct a public hearing. The line item of expenditure portion of the advertisement is for planning purposes. However, the total revenue and expenditures in total are as approved for the advertisement. The public hearing will be held on Tuesday, May 28, 2024, in the boardroom of the Administration Building, 340 South 6th Street, Whitfield, Virginia, at 6 p.m. The purpose of the public hearing is to give citizens of Wythe County an opportunity to comment on the proposed Wythe County School Board budget for fiscal year 2024-25. <coughs> and also, there was, uh, again, there was no one that signed up to speak on the school board uh, budget or the proposed county budget so I will close the public hearing portion of that now I'll refer back to you Mr. Barry. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman if you would like I, I've handed each of you all just a summary of the uh, proposed budget um, basically you have a total budget this year of a hundred and seventeen million four fifty two seven sixty three that is a decrease of three point six million from the fy 24 budget uh, school board budget of sixty three million two thirty nine four seventy five uh, an increase of six point seven million from the fy 24 budget uh, it's roughly an increase of approximately seven million dollars in state funds and uh, proposed local operational funds proposed to be the same as they were in uh, FY 24. Uh, the proposed tax rates, which will be the next public hearing that we open, no, pro uh, no proposed changes uh, in the tax rates. Next few pages are just some, some graphs with some summaries. Uh, total expenditure budget, as you can see, uh, dropped, dropped from last year. Uh, obviously, 23, uh, 24, 25 uh, had the largest you know, increases in a while. Uh, some of that has been related to the uh, additional uh, tasks we have taken on, such as emergency services and items like that. Uh, general government administration on the next page. Uh, the increases associated with it uh, primarily are the uh, email and server upgrades in the proposed budget transfer positions and of course all of these divisions are showing three percent increases across the board on it. Um, judicial administration, uh, you see an increase there. Uh, part of, a large part of that is increased, uh, increased comp board funding for our um, uh, comp board positions in, in that part of the budget uh, and additional grant funding for our VAWA and VSTOP positions. Um, public safety, uh, not, you see a small change there, uh, salary increases and in a lot of our uh, costs with our with emergency services. I will comment the spike you see in 21 that's on there was a lot of the COVID money that came in and was spent and went out to different operations. That's, uh, that's where that spike came from there. Public works is, is what I consider relatively uh, flat. Uh, that's basically our water, wastewater department, all of our buildings. Um, no, no major changes on that budget. Health and welfare. Um, health department increase there of 52,000. Uh, DSS total increase in their budget is about $700,000. I will comment the DSS budget that we presented, we did have a wrong line item in DSS administration. It's about $35,000 more that we will be adding to that budget. They had sent an original budget, and then they sent a budget, and they had the 3% increases and other things. We changed all the numbers except the DSS administration. So we will, when we adopt the final budget, we'll be adding uh, that $35,000 on it. Um, 
education, um, a slight increase over last year's final adopted budget. Uh, most of this is a, there is a, we talked about the six, seven million dollar report. There's also a decrease uh, in expenditure funds. We received 5.4 million at the end of last year that we added into the budget for school construction. Uh, there was state funds that came in. So that has come off and the additional state money for operations has come in. Um, there is a substantial increase uh, in the state operational funding. Um, however, Dr. Poole and myself are waiting for the final updated calculation tool from the Department of Education to put the final budget numbers in. When we made our estimates in here, we estimated an additional million dollars to come from the state based on the General Assembly budget. It actually came in more than that, and if you all don't mind, I'll let Dr. Poole just give a few comments about that while we're on the education budget. Yeah. State your name and your address. Harris <laughs> <laughs> Street. Uh, thank you all for uh, having me here. Uh, Dr. Wesley Poole, Wood County uh, Superintendent. Uh, somewhere between when I presented to you all the first time and the distribution sheet, the state realized that they had owed money for education in Virginia. So, you know, that's the first time I've been able to say that in a while. But what they were able to do when I presented to you back in March, uh, we were basing everything on the, the governor's introduced budget. And at the time, when I presented to you, we anticipated that there would be a compromise between the governor and the General Assembly. And we th I thought, well, you know, somewhere between the two, because the governor had proposed a $2.1 million increase and the General Assembly had proposed what would equate to us about $4.3 million. And if you remember, the budget I gave to you had 3.2 that we anticipated from the state. And that would have been, you know, that's level funding, you know, with 14.325 with the local operations without asking for any additional money. Well, the compromise that took place actually was the General Assembly's budget. So that means from what I presented, we're looking at an extra $1,145,000 over the 3.2 that I presented to you all that would be level. That would be the raises, the, uh, uh, the capital projects, every position that we talked about. So there's an additional $1,145,000 beyond that. So the state, again, realized that they had put a lot on the backs of localities, and they finally decided to step up a little bit this go around. And you know, that's a tremendous you know, boon for us, because there were some divisions in the state that actually lost money in this whole uh, recalculation. But for us, we came out ahead, substantially ahead. So, and it's always nice to have a little bit of good news. You know, it's not always something that we get from Richmond, but, you know, this year we did. So. Great and news. I was just saying that's great news. It, 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 it is beneficial to us, and it will allow us to do some things uh, without any additional money, which is always good for the citizens of the county if we're able to use state money to, to make purchases and do things because you guys have done enough over the years to keep that where it is and it's nice to finally say the state has picked up their game to, to shoulder some of their burden. One thing, one thing that I know we've talked about before um, and, and with this influx of, of extra money from the state and with the budget that you know, we've worked on and, and prepared before the state could do theirs, which seems to be the norm. Um, but, you know, with this extra influx of money, you know, we've talked about, you know, addressing some salary issues with teachers. And me personally, I would rather that money go to do that because of the labor market and 
you know, I know for a fact that we've lost teachers to other counties for more money. But if we can take what's been offered or, or take what's in that pot and address that issue while still maintaining the lowest tax rates in the region, you know, I don't have a problem with that. You know, we've addressed, you know, various positions in the county. We're addressing some this year. Um, you know, if we can, if we can stay competitive on the salary side while still maintaining our our tax rates, which you know nobody likes taxes and, and people will argue with you, but you know the the numbers are what they are, and, and we're the lowest in the region. Um, I don't have a problem with that. I don't know how everybody else feels, but that that's where I would like to see the, the money go. I mean, well, I, mean, I think y'all know how I feel about it. I, anytime that we can take care of our own people and keep them here versus them leaving, taking their knowledge somewhere else, I'm all for that. So. Yeah, that's one thing that, you know, some of these other folks around us have used extra money and other things to kind of get ahead well sooner or later chickens come off the roost and what we've done here in Wood County is do it with physically responsible in order to make sure what we're doing is sustainable so it doesn't come back to bite us later on and this is just another example here that we can get ahead to catch up with some others that have not done so right so. well and, and, and being a teacher in 2024 is, is a lot like the the people that were up there earlier wearing the guns and the badges. Uh, there's going to be a segment of the population that think they make too much money, but the application numbers sure are low. So yeah, the, the wheel's not real big at this point. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, but we, we appreciate all the job do. for the school division and. Like I said, what we're looking to do is to get ahead, and I know everyone's appreciative of that. And I think we have an opportunity to do just that, but also to not put ourselves in a bind for future budget. Not you don't use all of that money. You still you have to keep that cushion because those raises and everything that you do, that's in perpetuity. That's not something that you can change. So it has to be sustainable. And I think what we have a plan to do is just that. And I think it will be beneficial to, to all of our employees. All right. Does anybody have any further questions for Dr. Poole? Yes, sir. And I, and I mentioned the CALC tools. One of the charts I usually have in there is our local funding versus required local effort. Um, until we have this CALC tool, we won't see it. There's a minimum required local effort and then I'll call it required local contribution for other programs. Um, our delta, our difference there is getting a whole lot smaller and I'm, I'm curious to see where that number comes out but uh, our, our operational funding should still exceed the required local effort but it's, it's getting done a whole lot closer but that's we, we picked up when the state did and the state's picking back up and we'll just need to, uh, to get it, those numbers from a monitor. It's getting a lot closer, but there were several years when it was a lot further yeah, away. A lot further away. So, yeah. And we were the only one, or one of the only counties in, in the area that were that far away. You're exactly right. So, you know, with counties paid its dues, so okay. it's, it's nice to see the, the State that's, step that's up. the thing when you look when you throw all of a sudden 4.3 million dollars in there that's skews the skews the number a little bit that's that's they're just now getting back to where they should have been all along and maybe the state's turning a new leaf and they're going to start taking care of stuff they should have maybe it's baby steps <laughs> <laughs> A man can dream. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Paul. Appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate y'all letting me have him come into this because, as y'all know, during this budget, this has been the uh, that's been the biggest unknown, and they're obviously the largest part of, of our budget. So uh, we we still don't have final numbers, but we feel very good about the, the preliminary numbers and what we've got. So we will um, put those in order. Next few items: parks, recreation, and culture. Uh, the increase there primarily age or park improvements and, and we did have some library increase 
Uh, capital improvements, you will see are dropping, and uh, I'll go to the next page on it. Uh, major projects includes the uh, Ager improvements at Rural Retreat, at Ager improvements at Rural Retreat Lake Campground, and uh, the improvements at the Apex. Uh, the water projects, Barrett Mill and Dunford Road. And then uh, we do have some interim financing that has come due that uh, we will be uh, budgeting to pay off. Uh, at the same time, we are also in negotiations of possibly extending this out to help us with our Barrett Mill water project. But um, this is probably the fewest amount of capital improvement projects we've had in a while, but the, the Barrett Mill and the, the Dumford Road, those are large capital uh, improvement projects. Uh, next, just gives a breakdown of our of our primary revenues um, that we have that come in. I won't go through those, but um, slight increases coming in on those uh, meals and lodging, of course, has, has gone up a little bit. And the last is our local real estate tax rate comparison. Uh, we all take pride in in providing the services that we do uh, at the lowest cost to our citizens. Um, the first two are, are with last year and with this year remaining at 51 cents. Bland is at 60 cents. Carroll, uh, following their reassessment, has dropped down to 59 cents. Grayson had a reassessment, I believe, and they are debating now somewhere in the 54 to 57 cents. Uh, Pulaski is still at 74 cents. Smith had a reassessment, and they're I think having a public hearing next week or so, but um, they're somewhere between 54 and 57 cents is what they're trying to set, and uh, Washington County's at 60 cents. So just share that with you for informational purposes, and glad to answer any questions that you all have. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Baird? No, sir. All right, here and then we'll move on to our last public hearing for the proposed tax levy. And Mr. Barry, I'll give you the Sir. pleasure of reading that one. Pursuant to section 58.1-3007 of the Code of Virginia and amendments thereto, the Wythe County Board of Supervisors will conduct a public hearing. The purpose of the public hearing is to give the citizens of Wythe County an opportunity to comment on the proposed tax levy for calendar year 24. Public hearing will be held on Tuesday, May 28th, 2024 in the boardroom of the Administration Building, 340 South 6th Street, Withville, Virginia, at 6 p.m. or soon thereafter practical. Any Wythe County citizen can also provide written comments prior to the meeting that will be entered into the official minutes of the Wythe County Board of Supervisors and summarized by the chair or designee at the board meeting. Proposed tax levy for 2024. Real estate, current rate is uh, 51 cent. Proposed rate, 51 cent. Tangible personal property, current rate 222, proposed rate 222. Machine and tools, current rate 150, proposed rate 150. Merchants capital, current rate 56 cents, proposed rate 56 cents. Uh, the proposed use of such taxes, when and if appropriate by the Wythe County Board of Supervisors, shall be to defray the county's charges, incidental and arising, through, arising from the execution of lawful authority uh, the Board of Supervisors of Wythe County. All right. <clears throat> Again, we didn't have anybody signed up to speak for the proposed tax levy public hearing, so I'll close that portion of the public hearing. Mr. Baird, do you have anything to add on the tax rates? No, sir, Mr. Chairman, and uh, we will um, discuss later uh, review of these uh, but uh, proposed goal would be to uh, have our budget finalized for your all's potential approval at the June 11th meeting. Did you say June 11th? Um, I hope that's, that's correct. correct. Yes mm -hmm. sir. My birthday. Uh, <laughs> I wondered why you jumped all over there like I offended you. <laughs> all right. Does anybody else have anything for Mr. Bear for the proposed tax levy? Right, we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, the payment of invoices. Each board member has received in their packet a copy of the invoices that need to be paid. With that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the invoices. So moved. 
have a motion by Mr. Terry. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Cook. Is there any questions, discussion, or any invoice that any board member wants to pull out? All right. Here and now we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry. Aye. 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 So approved. <coughs> Next item on our agenda is minutes for a previous meeting for May the 14th, 2024. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So I have a motion by Mr. Smith. Do I have a second? Second. second have a second by Miss Lawson. Is there any corrections or additions to the minutes as presented? All right, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Moving on to old business, we have the retreat fire department air packs. Mr. Hankins, I believe that's you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, after your last meeting, I went to the rural retreat uh, town council meeting the same night. Uh, we had discussion in a uh, public session uh, where we talked about uh, their offer, and they have increased their offer uh, toward the AirPack purchase to $50,000. Um, that would uh, decrease the county's share of the purchase to $126,109.43. And staff recommends that you accept the offer and authorize staff to proceed with the purchase. All right, I'll entertain a motion to accept the offer and authorize staff to proceed with the purchase of the air packs. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Terry. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Morgan. Is there any questions or discussion on the motion? All right, here and now we'll do a roll call vote. Ms. Lawson? Aye. 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 So approved. Anything else under old business? No, sir. Mr. Hankins. All right, we'll move on to reports. We have the treasurer report, Ms. Gwynn. Included in that balance is the general fund balance, which totaled $51,195,183. So that was month ending April. Um, we've had a um, little bit of a decrease from the month before, and you'll probably see it start to decrease a little bit because we'll be getting year end expenditures in, and that always makes, um, makes that number adjust. Um, on the flip side of that, um, as far as revenue coming in, we did uh, mail out personal property late notices. Uh, they went out to the printers toward the end of April. They came out um, several days into May. Um, we mailed out about 7,300 notices, so those are slowly coming in. We'll be um, placing the B&B holds within about the next two weeks um, in an effort to try to continue to collect um, the 2023 bills in addition to any other prior year bills that we already have holds against folks, um, starting to work on uh, warrants and debt and get back um, in court to, to try to pursue the collection of those funds. Real estate delinquent notices, I'll be pulling that file um, by the end of this week and sending those to the printers as well. So those will be coming out um, and then coming up for the board for consideration would be at some point deciding if you want to publish the delinquent list for real estate and personal property. They were not done last year. Um, so I'm not sure if that's something that you want to consider doing this year or not, but it's just something to, to think about a food for thought frame at this point. So, um, but for the most part, that's pretty much all that I have um, that's going on with us unless someone has a question or a concern. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Gwynn? I do not. Oh, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have the commissioner. I didn't see Mr. Linkus. Uh, Sheriff Foster, you have anything? All right, we'll move on to new business. We have a consent calendar. Each board member has received that in their board package. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. 
have a motion by Mr. Cook to have a second. Second. Have a second by Mr. Smith. Any questions or discussion on the consent calendar? All right, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So approved. Move on to staff reports, Mr. Hankins. I did hand out a, uh, a couple of sheets of paper uh, before the meeting. Uh, I have some renderings of an ambulance uh, on there. Um, normally, I would have waited until Thursday when we meet uh, with uh, the Emergency Services Commission, but I need a response sooner than that so they can get started with uh, wrapping the truck. Um, traditionally, lead mines has used blue and orange, and that was also the same color that Rural Treat historically used uh, uh, for their ambulances. Um, most of our trucks now are, are in the blue and orange paint scheme, except for the red, white, and blue um, uh, for the two ambulances that remain uh, from uh, Rural Treat. Um, going forward, we need to know color scheme-wise what we um, ought to look like uh, when we're representing the county on emergency services calls. Uh, staff would recommend that we go with the uh, blue and orange uh, color scheme just because historically it does tie together the two uh, agency's history uh, and, and reminds us of what they've done to, to set the foundation that we're building on. Um, if you would rather we go with something that is a new direction, um, there's also a, a red and gray uh, rendering. Um, it's a little plainer, um, uh, but it would be, uh, it would also be wrapped in uh, reflective, so uh, it would be safer for our uh, emergency services folks. I uh, just wanted to get your um, your take on it. Uh, if um, if you don't have any objections to us going with the uh, orange and blue, we'll stick with those colors. Um, but we need to make a decision fairly quickly so we can go ahead and get those wrapped. Which one did you say was safest? Uh, staff would prefer the orange and, and blue. Uh, I don't think either one is safer. They both would be reflective. Uh, but uh, I'm willing to stand up and have you throw stones at me too. Oh, I feel I feel hardy. Party discussion comes. <laughs> <laughs> well, before it happens, I'm cool with the orange and blue. <laughs> I'm good with the orange and blue. I do have one question though: the seal on the door is that a county seal, or is that going to be the Rory Tree and Lead Mine seal? Staff would prefer that it be a county seal, uh, simply because we're coming together as a new agency and would prefer to, to have that. I think there are ways that we can mark the trucks with Lead Mines and Rural Treat to remind folks of the history that we're building on. Um, that, that, was, um, that was brought up by both agencies before we, we made the change. Um, you, we don't want folks in Rural Treat to be mad if a truck shows up with the lead mine seal or folks on the east end to be mad if a Rural Treat seal shows up in their neighborhood. So uh, we, we felt like <laughs> the county seal was the, the wiser choice. And, I, and I'm fine with that. Um, if we're going to mark them uh, for Rural Retreat and Lead Mines Blue, uh, I would like it. I know it can't be as big as the With County Emergency Services because it's got to be the largest print because that is the agency that's managing it. But the the little right that's down on the right corners of these boxes, if we, I think we can do a little bit bigger than that. That's currently on the units. I haven't seen Rural Retreat, so I can't speak for those. But anyway, that's that's all. Y'all done? I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If I call 911 and I need an ambulance, I don't care if it's red, black, orange, blue, purple, pink. I want an ambulance. I want it there quickly and staffed by professionals. With that being said, and I can't speak to lead mines, but Rory Treat has not missed a call since the county took over operations. Yeah, I haven't heard of any calls missed on the lead mine side, if there have. There, there are very few that roll. We still have times when we, we get to where we don't have any available ambulances if we get another call, but I don't think we've hit that, that true zero point yet where we, we were wondering just what we were going to do. Now, with that being said, I prefer the orange and blue because historically, Growing up, that's what all the animals were, mm -hmm. and I don't like change. However, 
I don't care. <laughs> I'm with you. Sir. Maybe put a bigger turbo on it. So when I call 911, they get there quicker. You can hear it coming. <laughs> well, I was just making it even before I like the points also. Does anybody else have anything on the paint scheme? I'm good Big at the decisions we have faced with. So, but thank you for your, your work on that, Matt. Thank you all. Uh, the other action item that I had is an amendment and appropriation resolution. Uh, staff recommends that you amend and appropriate $85,000 to the regional tourism budget to finalize the ARPA tourism project. Um, you've already accepted the funding and you, you've authorized expenditures, but the county has received some pass-through funds from Virginia Tourism that weren't included uh, in the budget this year. So um, we, we'd like to uh, get that $85,000 showing in the budget so we can pay out the 85000 that the, the DMO, um, Withwell Convention and Visitors Bureau, has already paid out on our behalf. Uh, so we can get them repaid before the end of the fiscal year. All right. I'll in entertain a motion to amend, amend and appropriate the $85,000 to the regional tourism budget. So moved. Have a motion by Ms. Lawson. Do I have a second? Second. So have a second by Mr. Morgan. Is there any questions or discussion on that? All right here, and then we'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Terry, aye, 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 aye. 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 So approved. Uh, just to point out a couple of updates, uh, we talked about the uh, Henley Mountain Electric. Uh, we're still waiting on AEP to um, give us the, the schedule when they're going to get that installed, but they have received their authorization to proceed. Uh, we don't expect that's going to be done until the, the next fiscal year, uh, so we'll ask for the use of carryover funds toward that project. Um, we're also waiting on Appalachian Power to give us the uh, final easements on the uh, Miller's Creek uh, portage uh, point uh, so we can get those uh, two projects bid out and get that work done this summer. Uh, I know Ms. Lawson is eagerly awaiting the, uh, the finish of those, um, those projects, uh, but it is a, a paperwork hang up uh, at Appalachian Power. And uh, we've been working with Mr. Mann in the real estate office to uh, try to get that wrapped up and uh, been communicating at least once a week and sometimes several times a week to try to get that done. Thank you. And I'll call Mr. Chairman, if you'll help me remember when we do our meeting tomorrow, it's not about this, but we'll mention to the AEP gentleman we're talking about just if he can do anything to help speed up that paperwork process or get in touch with somebody that can. Um, <clears throat> we did talk about ambulances some. Um, just an update on where we're at. The, the rural, retreat, uh, rural retreat ambulances both needed some mechanical work, some overhauling and some cleaning uh, when we took over the agency. Uh, so those trucks came to um, lead mines to, to be worked on uh, by uh, staff there. Um, they have been fully overhauled, cleaned, restocked, and put back into service. Um, still a couple of minor mechanical things on one of the trucks, but uh, it is minor uh, and should be fixed within uh, the next week. Um, the um, RSAF ambulance purchase, the, the grant purchase, the, the truck that you're looking at uh, on this paperwork, um, the state has processed the payment. That payment will be sent to Rural Retreat Rescue Squad. Uh, the, the board will then turn around and send those funds uh, to us. Uh, it could not be reassigned to, uh, to us uh, directly. And then the uh, used Blacksburg ambulance that um, you've agreed to, to use county funds to purchase. Um, that one should be here um, probably now by the end of June is the, the most recent update I had as of about an hour ago. Uh, so um, from a truck standpoint, we are in pretty good shape. Um, we have decided that uh, we're gonna take lead mine 7A, which is the truck that's mentioned in the report as having some uh, serious mechanical issues. We are gonna take that and have it evaluated by uh, another firm and uh, see if, if there is a way that it can be uh, can be fixed and put back on the road. It's, it's what we refer to as a summer truck. It doesn't have four wheel drive, but it is a, a good truck to have uh, for getting into tighter driveways and smaller spaces. Um, we are closer to uh, having our staffing filled out. Uh, we, we've got um, still some part-time uh, EMTs to hire to help us fill out that second truck at lead mines. Uh, but uh, our uh, staff is interviewing several times a week and uh, I think we'll uh, be up to speed probably by the end of June if uh, things continue the way that they're going. <laughs> um, and I know we've talked a lot about staffing for um, 
dispatch uh, just would point out that we are getting closer uh, we have three trainees now and we are preparing to make job offers to three additional trainees who would come on by the middle of June so that would get us um, to uh, 17 but you can't take two steps forward without taking a step back I've, I've uh, got uh, notice that there may be another dispatcher uh, leaving so uh, that would put us at 16 we are budgeted for 21 so we still have a little hiring to do but we point out that uh, our uh, HR director has uh, really done a, a fantastic job of going out and finding recruits uh, to, to help fill these dispatch positions so uh, we're, we're making progress on that front and uh, so if we don't lose more than one or two more uh, we will uh, you know be at least in a position where we can have three dispatchers per shift uh, by the end of the summer and unless anyone has any questions about the report i'll hand it to mr bear right somebody have any questions for <clears throat> mr hankins all right we'll move on to county administrator report mr bear uh yes first item um miss collins has uh been working uh with vacorp uh, they have recommended we uh, update our resolutions due to the changes in our emergency services so I would request that the board adopt resolution 2024-18. All right, entertain a motion to approve resolution 2024-18. So I have a motion by Mr. Smith. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by Mr. Cook. Is there any questions or discussion on the resolution? All right, here now we'll do a roll call vote. Ms. Lawson. Aye. <coughs> uh, uh, Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, uh. uh. So approved. Uh, next item is uh, just request the board establish a public hearing for July 9th uh, to consider amending the voting precinct ordinance, and that would be moving Speedwell Voting Precinct from Speedwell Volunteer Fire Department to Speedwell Elementary School, and then moving the Central Absentee Voting Precinct from its current location here on 4th Street over to our new building on 6th right. Street. So, Ms. Collins and uh, Mr. Counselor are working on the amendment language to the ordinance that we will present at a later time, but I'd like to go ahead and set that public hearing. All right. Entertain a motion to establish a public hearing for July 9th, 2024, to consider amending the voting precinct ordinances. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Terry to have a second. Second. <coughs> have a second by Ms. Lawson. Is there any questions? our discussion on that right here and then we'll do a roll call vote all in favor or all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye aye any opposed so approved rest of my items mr chairman are just informational items unless anyone has any questions about any of them all right does anybody have any questions for mr barrett right we'll move on to county attorney mr farthing do you have anything uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, just one thing in the packet for you. Um, the solar application to for JCR Solar, uh, that application was reviewed by the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission decided that the application was not compliant with the comprehensive plan. The applicant, JCR Solar, appealed that decision to the Board of Supervisors. And uh, there's some information in your packet. Staff is going to provide some additional information to you uh, regarding this application or appeal. Uh, the process essentially is uh, the board has an opportunity. The, the applicant is asking the board to essentially reconsider the planning commission's decision. Um, and then that would be heard on a future date uh, for you guys to hear a presentation from the applicant and then have a discussion if you want and decide whether or not you agree with the planning commission or want to overturn the Planning Commission's decision. So with some communication with the applicant, um, we've indicated then we're gonna provide information tonight and set it at a future date to um, for them to come and discuss with you their opinion of how it applies, uh, is compliant with the comprehensive plan. Um, so that's where we are on this. Uh, we suggested the next meeting and they have some scheduling conflicts with the next two meetings with the, the applicants I guess people that would attend 
uh, in the past, the, um, the attorney for them has made the presentation, and they might have had one other person speak. Um, so that's where we are. Uh, they want to look at the second meeting in July to come and discuss that with you. Um, but it's the pleasure of the board as to when you may want to hear this. Um, my recommendation is to uh, the second meeting in July uh, for them to come and at least have their day to make a presentation to you. That's July 23rd. And, and, and we've never had this happen before, so this is this question is not geared toward this particular mm -hmm. group, but why do we have the planning commission? Those well, seven individuals mm -hmm. are appointed by these seven individuals to represent our districts, our districts, mm -hmm. and you know, they've, I don't know how long they've spent on this. I know it's been a substantial amount of time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if Dr. Poole comes up, presents a school board budget, and we vote it down, what's his appeal process? We'd have to look at the code and see what appeal process he has. I'm not I sure he has. I think he has, has an appeal process. The Virginia code says that the applicant has an appeal from the planning commission to you all. So if you don't want to hear it and deny it outright, that's your your place. And, and it's it, so. it, this is the first time since I've been on the board, I, and since Ryan's been on the board that this has come up. But mm -hmm. my question is, it just you know, I, I don't understand the the why we have the the planning commission if it's you know. You know, Dr. Poole doesn't have that right. You know, uh, right. Miss Woods' finance, she doesn't have, you know, if she presents her budget, we, where is she going to go? Right. You know, I, that, that's my only question. So, it, it, to me, I'm not turning. It's one of those things like the code, like there are certain things in the subdivision ordinance, if it gets denied, they appeal to the circuit court. It doesn't come to the board of supervisors. But the code in this case says the appeal, if, if it agreed by the, the planning commission's decision or whatever, it comes to the board. I, I, I don't know why they make some one way and some the other. This is in the state law? Yeah. Yes. Yep. All right, what's the pleasure of the board? I'm fine with the July date. I'm not going to be here the first meeting of July. And you said they had a conflict. So the second meeting is what they're requesting to discuss. Out of state, that. All right. We need to take uh, action to set it on the second meeting, or I think you just asked the administrator to put it on the agenda for the July 23rd yeah, meeting. Thanks. Does anybody have a problem with that? Yeah. All right. So be it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have at this time. Thank you, Mr. Farley. <coughs> Move on to board reports. We have the Water and Wastewater Committee. Is that Mr. Burnett? That may be Mr. Burnett. Do you want me to read them through or what yeah. do I want to do them? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the Water Committee uh, met on May 21st, 2024, and recommends approving change order number five for the Max Meadows sewer collection system. This is a closeout of this project, and it's a deduction <coughs> of $25,299.49. All right, coming from committee, it doesn't need a second. Any questions or discussion on that one? Right here, now we'll do a roll call vote, Mr. Terry. Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, 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 so approved. Page 158 of your package is a, the letter, but it's basically authorizing the county administrator to enter into the letter of credit agreement uh, with National Bank contingent upon the Lots Gap tank project moving forward. Committee recommends approval of that, Mr. Chairman. All right. Again, coming from committee, doesn't need a second. Any questions or discussion on that recommendation? Just one question, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Meyer, and Mr. Father, if do I conflict out since that will become a term? This serves um, everybody in the water system, and so I do not see any conflict. No, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. 
Anybody else have anything? All right, here now we'll do a roll call vote. Miss Lawson? Aye. 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 So approved. That's all from the Water and Wastewater Committee. We'll move on to the Board of Supervisors time. Mr. Terry, we'll start with you, sir. No, I think at this time, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Mr. Morgan? I have nothing at this time, thanks. Mr. Smith? Nothing at this time. Mr. Cook? Nothing at this time, sir. Ms. Lawson? Well, nothing at this time. <laughs> When I, when I need it, I need it quick. So, uh, I just wanted to uh, thank the county staff for the work they did at the pool and the campground. I haven't been out there since Sunday um, after the storm. I know they had to have some trees cut up, but uh, the, the grand opening of, um, of the pool was nice. The water was warm. <laughs> And despite social media, I was not pushed. I jumped in. And there is video evidence of it. But besides that, that's all I have. Next item we have on our agenda is some closed session <coughs> closed session meetings. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Do you want to do all these? I'll just make a motion going on all of them, yes, sir. All right, entertain a motion to go in closed session under 2.23711A1 to discuss personnel, 2.23711A5 discuss prospective industry and project champion and 2.2-3711A8 consultation with legal counsel for solar petition and infrastructure improvements agreement. So moved. Have a motion by Mr. Smith. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second by, was that you Mr. Terry? Yes sir. Have a second by Mr. Terry. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We're now in closed session. All right, I have a motion by Mr. Cook and a second by Mr. Smith that we come out of closed session. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We're now back in open <coughs> session on the record. Mr. Terry, if you'll read the certification. Whereas the Worth County Board of Supervisors has convened a closed meeting on this date pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote and in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, whereas Section 2.2-3712 of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by the Worth County Board of Supervisors that such a meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Worth County Board of Supervisors hereby certifies it to the best of each member's knowledge on the public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in this closed meeting to which the certification resolution applies. And only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening this closed meeting were heard, discussed, and are considered by the Worth County Board of Supervisors. And, Mr. Chairman, I'll make that a motion, sir. All right. I have a motion by Mr. Terry to have a second. Second. I have a second by Ms. Lawson. We'll do a roll call vote. Ms. Lawson, we'll start with you. Aye. 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 So approved. Mr. Barry, you have anything else to come before the board? Uh, no, sir. Other than I assume you're going to talk about the next item on the agenda. No. I am. Okay. Mr. Hankins. Yes, sir. Mr. Forty. Yes, sir. Ms. Collins. All right. Uh, the next item on our agenda, we did have a uh, a recess for a uh, work session for tomorrow afternoon to consider public comments about the public hearings for the tax or the budget and the tax rate. We didn't receive any public comments so if it's the pleasure of the board instead of recessing we'll just adjourn to our next regular scheduled meeting any objection right here and then we'll be adjourned <laughs>